morning. The message for the song titles today is, I run to the Father because His name is power, and that is an amen. amen. Just give me Jesus. He is worthy. Great are you, Lord. Amen. 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 I say it every week, and I'll probably say it every week, but I just can't get over how that always comes together so well. <laughs> so... Father, we thank you for today and with the word that you have for us and all the information prior in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, I have a couple of prayer requests. Tisha is a lady that comes occasionally, is pregnant about four months, I believe. They found that there is a cyst on her left kidney. They're going to keep an eye on it. At this point, everything seems to be okay, so we will pray. And then there's a gentleman that did come through. His name says James Barrow, and his lady Linda I spoke with. He passed away all of a sudden from a heart attack. He had health issues as well. So we want to pray for Linda for her grieving, and James and Tisha's baby, and Tisha and the family as well. So Father, all these things, they're all shocking. They're all hard to deal with. They're all like a slap in the face. It's an unexpected fear that we deal with on a regular basis. But the only way for these healings to be real, true, and fulfilled is through you. So, Father, we are giving every bit of this to you to take care of for all of us to learn to see how that grows as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, and then uh, we have the prayer box in the hallway. That's the one that... Each little paper is underneath it. You write your prayer, you put it in the box, we pray over it and then shred it. We don't read them. It is not our business, it's between you and God. So that's all that is required is you drop it in there and we shred it. So, good morning. So today, a verse to improve our lives. This one is kind of like the way I talk. Finally! <laughs> Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. You know, it's not a hesitation. Just take Him, follow through, be with Him. And then it's grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's tithing prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for satisfying our every desire and need. Your word says we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so we, being rooted and grounded in love, and have strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, fill us with all the fullness of God. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. The tithing verse today that we have is Acts 20, verse 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And as I always say, again, something that I always probably will, I'm pretty repetitive, give of you what you can, how you can. There's many people that don't have finances, but they have so many ways to help somebody. And again, the simplest thing is saying hello, give them a smile, open a door, be there. It's been done for you, do it for them. So then we have the tithing box in the back of the room. We also have the Cash app and the Venmo app. And those that are unable to join us, although we'd love to have you here, you can mail it to Church of God's Word at 227 West Main, West Fargo. North Dakota, 58078, but again, we'd love to see you in person. So today, I'm going to talk about God serves. Yeah, and he, I tell you what, he had me bouncing all over the place to get to this point. Usually he's pretty good about giving it to me direct, but it kind of fits in the process of the title because I have started typing three different times. And it's like, okay, what's up? And he kind of tells me, I served you. Okay. Well, sometimes you just gotta listen. And I tend to talk better than I listen. And anybody who knows me knows this. 
But that's the way some of us are. And others listen better than speak. However, it's a communication. So then it's how God serves us. And I thought about writing it down as the week has gone by, but I would never get through reading them. Did you realize God serves us constantly? And you always hear, we are to serve God. That is what we do. We serve God. We are his child. We do what he wants us to do. But it's clearly so much more obvious that he serves us. When you hear things like, he gave us everything. He blesses us. That's a serve that he gives us. You know, it's in our prayers he serves us, our requests, things he helps us with, daily life of things that happen from the minute you wake up till you go to bed, the birth of a child. That's a blessing that God serves us with. These are all blessings from God, but just phrased in a different format of he serves us. And he loves us is why he does. And we serve him because, well, one, we're supposed to. It's written. He wants us to. It's not that we have to. We have that free will problem. But take the free will and use it the right way. <laughs> and you've got more blessings that God has served to you than you could even remember. So we'll start with Deuteronomy 15, one, or 11 through 15. And just to give you a heads up, I was going through it as I usually do, and sometimes I highlight it and underline it. There is more in here than I started with that I realized, and it just kind of went, wow. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. If any of you people, Hebrew men or women, sell themselves to you and serve you six years, in the seventh year you must let them go free. And that whole thing sounds kind of weird in the first place because, you know, today it's not how things are done. And when you release them, do not send them away empty-handed. Supply them liberally from your flock, your threshing floor, and your wedding press. Give them as the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. This is why I give you this command today. So when I was going over it, there's always, there will always be poor. It sounds really cruel, but you know, that's the way God wants the church to behave, to do that for others as well, like we do with the pantry, and with the teachings, and meetings, and things like that. And you kind of come open-handed to the poor who need you. But then it's supply them liberally. Okay, the only way you can supply somebody liberally is that the Lord has blessed it with you, so he has served you to forward it on to somebody else. And then God has blessed you. He's, he served you. God redeemed you. And then I've got and serve you for six years. I thought that really just sounded awful, but then at the same time, I had a different shift in my brain. And it wasn't my doing. <laughs> it was God saying, he did this for them so that they would be held safe, fed, taken care of. It was he served them to be able to survive. In those days, it wasn't like you could just walk in and get a job. Most of it was manual labor in the fields, finding the animals and things like that. But they had the choice to take care of themselves or be a, a servant, a slave, if you will, to get fed, have housing, be taken care of. It sounded worse than it was in those times. It wasn't like they were all just beaten and chained. But his blessings is such a service for us when we take so much of it for granted. I know I do, but when, like I said, he had me bouncing around and then to tell me, I served you. It's like, oh. Do you ever have those moments when God says something to you and you're kind of like, but at the same time, it's so obvious. Oh, this is what comes through your mind. It's like, 
it helps. You've got to talk it out with yourself, out loud, with God, out loud. Find an option. Blessing Psalm, or pardon me, Psalms 76, 4 through 10. When you are radiant with light, you are more majestic than the mountain rich with game. The valiant lie plunder, plunder, yeah, plunder. They slept, mm -hmm. they sleep their last sleep. Not in the warriors can lift their hands. And I'm doing well looking up there. And you rebuke God of Jacob. Both horse and chariot lie still. It is you alone who are to be feared. You can stand before you when you are angry. Who, excuse me, who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounced judgment, and the land feared was quiet. When you, God, rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted of the land, surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise, and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Okay, well, at the end right there. I didn't even see that one until just now. Your survivors. That's a blessing. That's a gift. He served you to survive and not be restrained. He lifted things from you. And then earlier I was coming across in the beginning. You are radiant with life, more majestic than the mountains. You glow. People see this. This is a gift, a blessing that he put on you. That he served you with so people can see. You have Jesus in you, and people see it. Why is that person always so bright and lit up? When they say bright, a lot of people think, you know, intelligent-wise. This is a different kind. This is the light of the Lord shining through you. you got the sparkling eyes and that charming smile. And people are just drawn to you. Some have it more than others. It's a gift that God has given us. And only God is the right to have the place to judge. Mankind does their problems, does their things, and they do it. But to be in judged, to be judged by God is a totally different aspect. That is with Him. That is with you, your spirit, your soul, your being. The only one who can judge you is God. And the only way you're really going to be judged is, do I have Jesus or don't I? Again, heaven or hell? Sorry, I don't agree with me and going to hell. So everybody has to have Jesus and go to heaven. I sound like a spoiled child because I want everybody to have Jesus and go to heaven. And that's one of the best whining procedures we could ever do because that is the best thing any person can do for themselves. Nobody can do it for them. And God has served you with this opportunity. So take it. Malachi 3, 16 through 18. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. You know? He serves us by listening to what we say. He listens to me when I'm up here, and I have no doubt there's been times he's had a pretty good chuckle of some of the things that come out of my mouth. He's the one who made me, so I'd like to give him the credit. <laughs> Or the blunders, whichever you want to call it. But everybody does. Nobody is perfect, and he has made us that way as a service to us to help us grow in absolutely everything in our life. A scroll of remembrance was written in the, his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. And he gives us the opportunity to honor him but he honors us as his children. On the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they may be, treasure, they may be my tre treasured possession. I will spare them. He serves us in letting us survive. Just as a father has compassion and spares his son who serves him, and you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who don't. Okay? But then we can see it the other way around. If you don't have Jesus, God doesn't serve you. You're still alive. The devil can bless you with things. We were, now that I think about it, we were watching Joyce Meyer this morning before we came in, and she mentioned the fact that those who 
worship the devil or just don't have Jesus, the devil blesses them too. They have all these beautiful things. And so many people are jealous of it and get, when you get behind all those beautiful things, they are miserable. They are really unhappy. They put on this act, but they have this hole in their being completely lost. They can lose everything they have, and then they're going to be unhappy. Well, they're still already unhappy. So for God to serve them and them to serve God, again, you have to have Jesus. Malachi 4, 1 through 6. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And that day is coming. Will set the fire, set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Evil doers. There you go. And then the stubble. That's where everything is all burnt down. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of the Righteousness will rise with the healing in this rays. The Lord has given us the Son. He serves us with this beautiful morning sun, afternoon, or like in uh, Alaska, when it's summer, 24 hour sun. So, how can that be bad? We're not living in darkness when we have that. And you will go out and frolic like well fed past. Okay, now, at this one, I was reading it again, <laughs> and I just started to giggle. Because on our way, we drove past where these cows are feeding, and there's little calves. And have you ever watched a calf run? I'd really love to demonstrate it, but I can't do it that well. <laughs> 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 you know, it, <laughs> it's like a really big puppy kind of thing, but you know. And we were just chuckling about that. The kids, you know, they're just, um, I lost my place because I got so caught up in that. And you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. We will be those well-fed calves when we do serve the Lord and He serves us because our life is doing well. Now, those of you that know me, even a little bit, have come to realize that I have no problem doing something in public. <laughs> and I will, and I wouldn't hesitate to stand there and yell in the middle of the mall, like, Praise the Lord! And do some silliness. But you know, if it affects somebody in the right way, I don't care what other people think. If that is put on me to do, I'm going to do it. Because I'm the quiet, shy one, as I may often tell you. <coughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm up here. <laughs> oh, then you will trample on the wicked. And you know what? If that's what we need to do, then we will do it. It's not something that we want to do or to be proud of because we want them to be saved. But if that be the case, hang on, Stan, it's going to be the same thing that I've said before. We stomp on the devil and send him flying, and that's where the evil will go with him. If you start finding that you've got that feeling that it's sneaking up on you, you just have to remember. You call out, Jesus, 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 and they have to flee because they're afraid of him. And in the name of Jesus, this is my bubble, and you can't touch me. And I want a bigger bubble, so Lord, let's make it a bigger bubble. And let me bring the right ones in with me so we can attack them and make them better, too. God has blessed us with so many things to serve with and to be served by. And so then you will stamp on the wicked, and they, they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I act, says the Lord. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I give him at Herod for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Isaiah. See, he's always blessing us. He sends them to us. He's serving us with other people. To you, before that great and dreadful day of the Lord, <laughs> comes, he will turn the hearts of the parents to their child. Now he serves us by changing our hearts and the hearts of the children to their parents or else I will come and strike the land with a total destruction. 
He's telling us to turn to our Father. Let Him be our leader, our guide, and He wants to take us in, so give yourself to Him. It's repetitive, definitely. But it's real, it's true. It's not just a book. It is the living word. And it tells you in here. These verses that I'm reading now, I have used for many different verses through time. For different reasons and meanings. And again, it's called the living Bible. You can read the same chapter thousands of times, and all of a sudden you're going to get a totally different look on it. It's not an accident. It's planted that way through God. Matthew 23, 8 through 12, these are Jesus' words. But you are not called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father. We only have one God. That is real. The rest of them are not. Our God is the only God to have. And he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors. You have one instructor, the Messiah. And that is our Jesus. He taught his disciples so well that they were served by God to help write this. It was a team effort with God and the disciples to write these words in our Bible. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt himself will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It's the power. We are given power. God serves us, as I said, with gifts. We have the powers. We have the blessings. We have the sharing. There are so many things that we can do that people do not even pay attention to. You speak in tongues, that's a communication to God, that's a gift. If you heal people, that's from God, that's a gift. Whatever it is God has you to do, he has served it to you to serve him and his children. Do not shortchange yourself. It may change your lifestyle altogether. You may have this beautiful, fancy home, kind of like Matthew did. And when he was a taxpayer, he had all this money, he had all this beauty, and he really wasn't happy. He had no family. He had a dog. That was all he had, and money. And then the Lord got a hold of him through Jesus. And lo and behold, look what he's done. So do not have things more important than God. I said it before, as many things, I'll say it again. God first. Family second, business third. Never say, I love anybody more than I love God, because that is not good. I love my husband totally, completely, but God comes first. It's not to insult him or offend him in anything, but that actually is better for us to have it admitted and confessed. Open your hearts and let it spell. John... 2, 8 through 11. Then Jesus told them, Now draw down and take it out to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. For those that are not familiar, this is from the wedding. The first time Jesus did something. Well, something big. <laughs> there were people to see. He'd done many things, obviously. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. They called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests had too much to drink. <clears throat> There's a lot of places that still do those things. It's let's save a buck. Shame is what it looks like. <laughs> but you have saved the, list, the best for now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed him. Now, the Lord shares these with us. They're not just stories, they're facts. He serves us with teaching us what had gone on, what his son did before what he did for us. If you think about it, who here can turn water into wine? That's just the thing that Jesus does. 
one time. And some people think, oh, no. They scooped up all that water, and they knew it was water, so he had proof that people still don't want to believe it. They were servants, and they were serving God then, and God served them as well. They got to witness the first thing that Jesus showed done. Now, how many people wouldn't be going around? You know, if you've ever met somebody really famous, how many times would they walk around, you know who I got to meet? You know what? They're so cool. And how many of them got to walk around and say, we saw him turn water into wine. Now, which one would you rather be part of? I go for the water into wine. Because that is so real. It's not what money bought because somebody is famous. And then when they lose their popularity, it's who? It's still, we know, it's him. John 12, 16, or 26 through 33. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who saves, or serves me. Yeah. My father will honor the one who serves me, and in turn, he's serving him. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? Well, we can be thankful that he didn't. No, it was the very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. It's a continuous his and hers and his and hers, God's and man, God and mankind. The crowd that was there and heard it said it thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of the world will be driven out. The prince is the devil. And he's gone down. And I, and I, when I am lifted from the earth, will draw people to myself. He said to the he said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Well, I don't know. You know how many people have you heard say, I'd die for Jesus? Mm -hmm. Would you die the way he died for you? To be literally tortured and nailed to a cross and humiliated and everything awful you can imagine? And yet some people don't want to. No, that was really nothing. That is history that will never end. And that is fact. And that is why my life is so great. Because I have Jesus. Even if I have something lousy going on, the Lord is still serving me. He is still taking care of me. And I am in turn returning to what I can do. Romans 3, 3 through 6. What if some were unfaithful? Well, we can fix the fact that we know some are. But to serve God, to let him help us, he will. Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. You're human. You make mistakes. You ask for forgiveness. Let God be true and every human being a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. Mm. You judge. We all do. We're human. We don't always do it on purpose. And sometimes I have heard myself thinking things, and it's like, oh my gosh, Carla, shut up. Yeah, I tell myself, shut up. <coughs> but I have to get my own attention and figure out what is my problem. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? So if you hear that and you find yourself having to fix it, it's, forgive me, Lord. That's God saying, hey, <clears throat> let's talk about this and fix it. That God is, in, God is unjust in bringing, us, bringing his wrath on us. Certainly not. That if we are so, how could God judge the world? You know, he is the only thing, as I said, to be the real judge. Our system in the world, people wanted this, so God gave it to them. And we have lawyers, we have courts, we have judges, we have jails, and we have all this other stuff. 
that. That's not God's way. But he gave it to us. Romans 14, 16 through 20. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken as evil. Don't let it get twisted. It's real easy for somebody to just tweak it enough, but it's wrong. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and <laughs> receives human approval. Excuse me. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual affection. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. No. He feeds us in so many ways. All food is clean, but it is wrong for the person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. Just because you're doing something, whether it be good, right or wrong, does not mean you get in the way of somebody else. You cannot force it on anybody, but you can still share it with them. I mean, there are people you just want to like, come on, this is what you got to do. Yeah. What is that going to do for them? They're going to go the other way even further if you don't do it God's way. He gives you the gift and how to approach people and how to talk to some or who to have them talk with others. Philippians 2, 19 through 24. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who shall show genuine concern for your welfare. Now, he's the Lord right there has served him with all this from one person to do for him. For everyone looks out in their own interests. There's a lot of self-centered people. This is me, mine, me, you know, no, no. You can't live that way. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served me in the work of the gospel. Right there. There it is again. He is serving God who served him, but it's in the gospel as Timothy's help to do. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. This whole thing is God serving him, helping him. Anything God helps you with, he's serving you. Anything he shares, shows, teaches, he's serving you. It's a blessing, but what is a blessing? It's a blessing is something that somebody does or gives for somebody else. It's a servant. Some people think a servant is a low-level thing. Now, I beg your pardon. I've done food service. I've done bar work. And I've done other things. Not everybody can do that. There are a lot of people that go to restaurants just so that they can be less than charming. Excuse me. And I dealt with a lot of them. And there was more than one way to deal with each individual. That is each different personality. You get somebody who is instantly crabby, and you want to respond, listen here, dude, that might get you fired. It's like, what? So what can we do to cheer up this day? It looks like it could be a little happier, something just light. And some people, it doesn't matter. They're miserable, so you just pray under your breath for them. Hebrews 6, 13 through 15. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you the descendants. He is serving him a whole lot of family. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Again, if he's going to serve you, it's a promise, and God does not break his promises. So keep in mind, if you have a desire put in you, that's a gift that God is serving you with to do something through him, with him, for others. I absolutely love what I do. I get tired of, and I get kind of crabby, and, you know, there's always a, something that something comes up in everybody's life. But I love what I do because this is God, not me. He said that he picked this personality, so that's his problem. So Hebrew 8, 1 through 6. Now, the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down 
at the right hand of the throne, the majesty in heaven. And who serves in the sanctuary? He is serving the Lord there. The true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Every high priest appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. He is giving a service. And so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were here on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already priests who offer gifts prescribed by the law. Another serving. They serve at the sanctuary. Again, I mean, this is just continuous. How, if you pay attention, continuously serving God and then serving us with what he's doing. They serve at the sanctuary that is a copy of the shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown on the mountain. Now, if you want to serve God the right way, you do what he wants you to do. See to it that you make every account. Oh, oh pardon. But in fact, the mystery Jesus has received, the ministry Jesus has received is a superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is a mediator, a superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. We have the New Testament. We serve through it. He serves us. It's a continuous, beautiful circle. Just like some of the pictures. First Peter, fourth so through eleven. In the end of all things near, therefore be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. God has given us this gift to serve us to pray to Him. Above all, love each other deeply. There is one because love covers over multitudes of sins. There is another part. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. There is another one. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. He served it to you, so you can serve it to them. As faithful stewards of God, amen, grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Whoops. Yes. Okay. If anyone serves, they should do so with strength God provides. He served you with the strength. It's a gift. So that in all things, God may pray, be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, this is to help us understand. This is another sign of God's love. He's always sharing with us how and what to do. We can't lose communication. It's got to be a continuous thing, and this is part of how it works. So, Father, praise you, Lord. We are so grateful for the different meanings that you can put in the word that we read time and time and study time and time. And you teach me in the process of what you want us to know. And you take us through day to day, Lord, hour to hour, and we are grateful for all that you serve us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And with that, we will have communion.
it helps pick up that thin little piece of plastic. If you need some help, I'll be happy to. Yeah, you got the whole thing, so we'll roll that back down. And then this piece off. Oh, that bad. Yeah. All right. I have noticed children do it better than adults. <laughs> All righty. If yours isn't working, let us know and we'll get you another one. All right, everybody's good? Fabulous. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is my cup, new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And for those that have now chosen <coughs> to make Jesus as your Savior, the most important thing to do for you, please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus come into Lord my heart. Come into my heart. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. And it is so beautiful. It can never be a wrong thing to say. And if you have any questions or prayer requests to reach out to us, you can email the church at churchofgodsword at outlook.com. You can reach the church at 701-639-6240. You can stop in during office hours, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday are 10 to 2. Wednesday is 10 to 12 because we get the truck in, and I have to kick you off because I don't want anybody to get hurt. We're located at 227 West Main, West Fargo. And we're looking forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. So we have Wednesday nights at 7, Sundays at 10. Thank you for coming, and God bless you. And we have one more song. Oh, before I forget, that almost happened. Um, the bus is still not running. So we can have uh, Sunday school right over here before we get set up for potluck. We'll bring out a little divider so you can just all have a little privacy and carry on. It looks like it's fun. So, now we'll have a song. <laughs> <laughs>